Now, uh, so let's complete that code and we'll, we'll do some operations here. Now the first operation you need is, so whenever you click on this button B, it will call this method called as action perform. That means first step is we need to fetch the data from this text field and we'll store this data in int variable we'll say num1 and the second variable is num2. Now how to store data? In this num1 the data should come from text field t1 right? But the problem is the, the scope of this t1 ends in the constructor. So the scope of this t1 in this constructor. Unfortunately you cannot use t1 here. So what we can do is we can just expand the scope and we'll define all the variables outside, all the, all the reference outside. So we'll say text field t1 comma t2. In fact we should define, we should, we should declare everything outside. So we'll say button b and we should define a label, declare label also outside. So we'll say label. So we don't need to define or declare it here. So we'll say we'll remove this. We are doing this only to increase the scope. Okay. So we'll say button B and that's it. So we'll say L. Now what next? We'll go here and we'll say now we need to fetch the data from text field and the name of the text field is T1. So this T1 is an object, it will have some methods and the method to fetch that data is T1 dot get text. So using get text you can fetch the data. But if you can focus on this get text, it returns you string value and the out or the uh, the value we're expecting here is int, right? So we need to convert that string into integer with the help of integer dot pass int method. So it is pass int and we'll pass it here now. So let's say we need to pass this t one dot get text into this integer dot pass int and we'll use the same code here. So we'll say copy paste. So instead of t1 this time it will come from t2. So now num1 has a value t1 and num2 has a value of t2. Now once you got the value let's add these two numbers. We'll say int uh, value is equal to num1 plus num2. Now your addition comes in value right. Now we need to set that data set that value in this label. So once you got the output Let's set the label. So label name is L dot. We need to set the data or text. So there's a method called set text. And set text ask you for string value. You can see set text ask you for string value. If you pass K here or if you pass value here, unfortunately it will give you an error. It says it will ask you for a string and you're passing an integer. So we need to convert this integer into string by simply saying plus double quotes because integer plus string will give you string and that means the output of this two will be a string. Simple. And that's it. When you If I run this code now, let's run this. Uh, so we got this window here. Let's do some design thing. Let's say 5 and 4. Now if I click on OK, the output is 9. You can change this value. If I say 5 plus 9, the answer is 14, right? So this is how you can add two numbers. So now here, let's make, make a quick, uh, quick recap. So it is T1, it's your text field. T2 is a text field, but B is button, L is label. We need to add all those components. Since by default, B uh, is dumb, we need to add a listener and that listener name is action listener and this method will ask you for the object of action listener. So we'll, we need to implement, since we need the object of action listener, we need to say our class will implement action listener and indirectly, since we are implementing action listener, we need to define a method called as action perform in this action perform, so whenever you click this object or whenever you click this button, it will always call the method called as action perform so that we can execute these statements. So this is how we have to add two numbers using Java Swing. In the next part, we'll talk about subtraction, multiplication using the same code. Thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for further videos.